Welcome to this session on making custom nodes. My name's Amy and I work on Lexical iOS. This session is an iOS counterpart to the Lexical React session titled Creating Your Own Nodes and Plugins. If you want to get a feel for the similarities and differences of Lexical JavaScript and Lexical iOS, watch both sessions to see how we accomplish the same thing on different platforms. We're going to be making a banner node today. Our banner node is going to be a node that's able to contain other text, give it a background colour and some kind of styles around it. Because it can contain children, that means it's going to be an element node. There are a few different types of nodes in Lexical that you can extend. Text node, element node and decorator node. Text nodes have actual text content. They're leaf nodes, so they don't contain children. It wouldn't be appropriate for our banner node to be a text node, because an entire text node has to have the same style. In our banner, we want the user to be able to, for example, make one word bold. Element nodes don't have their own text, but they do contain children. The children can be any kind of node, other element nodes, text nodes, etc. This is what we're going to use. Decorator nodes let you embed arbitrary views within your document. They don't have children as such, unless you do what's called a nested editor and embed another lexical instance inside your decorator node. This is fairly complicated, and at this time the support for nested editors in lexical iOS is a work in progress. So first of all, let's start by creating a new class, extending element node. We also need to create a type for our node, which we do by extending node type and then returning the new type in our node's getType method. We'll also give our node an initializer and a clone method. Element nodes can be inline or block level elements. We don't want to be inline, so we will override isInline and return false. That's actually the default, so we could have omitted this method, but it's a good idea to be explicit. Next, we'll implement getAttributedString attributes. If you're coming from Lexical Web, you'll be familiar with the createDOM method for defining what the node looks like. GetAttributedString attributes can be thought of as the iOS equivalent. String attributes are the building blocks for rich text styling using TextKit. For more information on Lexical's use of attributes, you can watch the Themes and Attributes session. Back to our node. To start with, we'll just implement some boilerplates to pull attributes from the theme. At this point, we've got a node. It doesn't do anything particularly useful yet, but it's a starting point. Let's talk about adding this node to Lexical. It's always a good practice to do this by building a plugin. We have a whole session on plugins, so please watch that to learn more about building them. To start with, our plugin registers the node. Registering the node is required to teach the lexical editor about our node. Also inside our plugin, we're going to quickly make a command that wraps the current selection inside a banner node. Making a command isn't strictly a required part of creating a node but it'll make it super easy to hook up a toolbar button to test it out. Additionally, having a command would make it possible for other plugins to intercept and modify the behaviour of our plugin, if desired. We have a whole session on the selection and building toolbars, where we go into much more detail about this. So for now, I'll just insert the code that will wrap the current selection inside a banner node. Now let's go to where we construct our lexical editor and get everything hooked up. First of all, we ensure we instantiate our plugin and pass it in when constructing the lexical instance. Remember, our plugin registers the node itself and it registers the command for inserting one. Then we need to wire up our UI. Obviously, this will depend on how you built the rest of your toolbar. But let's assume that what we need to make is a UI bar button item. 
We'll create our UI bar button, button item and hook it up to call a selector. In that method, we'll need to access the lexical editor, which I'm assuming is available as an instance variable. Once we have this, we simply need to dispatch our new command. This is enough to get our node working. Let's take a look at it in the Playground app. I'll type some text, select it, and then tap on our new toolbar button to wrap it in a banner node. Of course, nothing has changed visually, because we haven't told our node to do anything yet. But you can see down in the hierarchy view at the bottom that we now have a banner node. Up to this point, we have been building the same node as in the Lexical React session Creating Your Own Nodes and Plugins by AC Watson. There have been some differences for iOS, but so far those differences have been fairly minor. At this point, we're going to diverge a bit. In AC's session, he styled his banner node by making a div, applying a CSS class to it through the theme, and using some simple CSS to give it a background colour and a margin. Lexical iOS is not built on top of CSS, so we'll have to take a different approach to achieve the same effect. Our styling is done by text kit attributes, plus some extra features that Lexical has included to extend their functionality. So let's consider what we need to do to match AC's banner node. The first thing we want is a background colour. TextKit does have a background colour attribute, so you might be tempted to try that. Let's have a look. We can insert the attribute in, into our getAttributedStringAttributes method, and oh no, that isn't what we want. The background colour is only displaying where there is text, but we want it to be the full width. We're going to have to draw it ourselves. If you've done TextKit custom drawing before, you might be getting worried now. It's not an easy thing to do directly in TextKit. Luckily, Lexical makes it much easier. We'll trigger our custom drawing via a new attribute. Let's call it full width background colour. We define the key by extending string key. Then, in our node's getAttributedStringAttributes method, we'll set a value for our new attribute. Now to teach Lexical how to draw it. We want to register a custom drawing handler. We'll register this in our plugin setup method. We tell it the name of our new attribute. We tell it we're drawing in the background, that is, behind the text. Next we tell it the granularity. This tells Lexical whether to call our handler lots of times with different rectangles, or to collate those rectangles into one bigger rectangle. We want the latter. We could use single paragraph granularity, and then we get a rectangle per paragraph. But we'll actually use contiguous paragraph granularity. That way we get one rectangle encompassing all contiguous paragraphs with the same value for our custom attribute. Now let's write the code. There are a load of different things passed into our closure, but we can ignore most of them for now. We care about attribute value and rect. Let's cast the attribute value to a UI colour first of all. Now we need to do some custom drawing. We can use UI graphics get current context to get a CG context. And then it's as simple as setting a fill colour and filling our rect. Let's try it out. Now, our banner is correctly filling the full width with our background colour. A quick side note, if we have two consecutive banners, our drawing handler will be called only once because we asked it for contiguous paragraphs. This is fine when we're just drawing a background colour, but imagine that we wanted to draw a border we only get one border drawn around both banners. If we wanted to avoid this, we'd need to make sure our attribute value was different between the banners. 
One way of doing that would be to make a new class for our attribute value, containing a property for background colour, and additionally a property for something unique, such as node key. Note that I've made this inherit from nsObject. This is because TextKit uses nsObject equality to check if two attributes are equal. Moving on, the next thing our banner needs is some margins above and below it. For this, we'll use Lexical's block level attributes. This feature of Lexical is designed to allow you to add spacing above and below an entire node without having to care about TextKit's concept of a paragraph. For more details on this, see the Themes and Attributes session. We'll just add some values in here. Another thing that AC added in the React session is a border on the left of the banner. Again, we'll need to use custom drawing here. First, we'll change the drawing of our background to use an alpha value of 0.3. Then, we'll create and fill another rect this time being only 4 pixels wide. We'll fill it with our custom colour, but this time at full alpha. This is getting there, but we need to tweak the padding on the left and right. With a few extra attributes, we can adjust that. And now our banner looks like it's intended to. Let's consider some custom behaviours. Watch as I delete all the text in this banner node. Then I press backspace one more time. It visually seems like the banner node has disappeared, but if we look at the hierarchy, it's still there. Type another character and it comes back. There's two things going on here. One of them is a missing feature in Lexical. I can't quite call it a bug because it's merely something not implemented, but it's certainly unexpected. And that is that our custom drawing does not run on empty lines at the end of the document. If I add some text after the banner node, then it does draw the background even if the banner is empty. Hopefully Lexical will improve on this in the future. If anyone is interested in improving Lexical in this regard, let me know and we can discuss a fix. The second issue is one that we can improve Pressing backspace at the beginning of a banner node simply doesn't do anything. But Lexical provides a hook that can let us fix that. It's a method called collapse at start, which we can implement on our custom node. This method governs what happens when you hit backspace at the beginning of our node. Let's implement it and write some code to replace our node with a paragraph node, keeping all the children. Now if I backspace from the beginning of my banner node, the banner goes away. There's one more concept I would like to introduce. I'm diverging from the Lexical React session a bit here, but I think it's good to mention this now. Let's talk about how you can add a property to your node, because there are a few gotchas here that it's important to know about. We're going to make our node able to render two kinds of banners, message and warning. We want the message banners to be in yellow and the warning banners to be in red. First, we'll need an enum to list the different banner types. Now we need to add a property on our node. See that we're making this property private. This might seem surprising. After all, we want users to be able to change this property, right? We're going to write public accessor methods for that. And in, in particular, we want our getter to call getLatest and our setter to call getWritable. This is really important as part of maintaining the consistency of the lexical editor state. What's happening here is tied into how the lexical update model works. When a node is manipulated, it is only modified in the pending editor state. This is accomplished by calling getWritable. That method will clone the node if necessary and return the version of the node that is in the pending editor state. Likewise, the getLatest method will return the latest version of the node. So if you've got an old copy of a node that has since been cloned, 
you can still read the latest values that are pulled from the clones node. As well as these accessors, we also need to make sure to copy our new property when the node is cloned. So we'll go to our clone method and add that. Finally, we'll change our getAttributesStringAttributes method to use this property to affect the colour we send to our background attribute. Now if I have a banner node, I can update it by using our new setter inside an update block. Lexic will, will re-render the node in its new colour. Let's wrap things up. We've looked at how to create a new node, register it with Lexical, and make a command to create it. We've seen how to use attributes to style it, and how to create new attributes with custom drawing for the situations where the built-in attributes are not sufficient. We've added a piece of custom behaviour by overriding one of the methods on element node. And we've discussed how properties work, including your obligations when writing getters and setters. I hope this has been useful and thank you for watching.